a big day in space. SpaceX launching its Starship spacecraft into orbit. A step closer to Mars or more FAA bummers? Those were the possibilities facing Elon Musk and his loyal band of rebels at SpaceX earlier this month. Starship's third test flight had proven to be yet another explosive lesson for the team, and with major milestones projected for Test Flight 5, the pressure was on for Flight 4 to succeed. This called for a huge need to re-strategize. So what changes were implemented? How did that affect the overall success of a reusable Moon and Mars rocket? How many more regulatory tugs of war were in store? Well, let's talk about it. SpaceX has long promised that 2024 would be a landmark year for the Starship's development, and so it has proven. The private space giant began the year dealing with mechanical and administrative issues stemming from last year's Test Flight 2, which ended in flaming failure. The Federal Aviation Authority, FAA, demanded that SpaceX carry out an internal investigation and produce a report detailing everything that went wrong with Flight 2, as well as proposed solutions and workarounds. Delays in SpaceX's production of the report and the FAA's analysis of it meant the FAA couldn't grant Flight 3's launch license in time for a January or February 2024 launch date. While awaiting the report, SpaceX made comprehensive changes to various parts and processes of the Starship prototype. These included liquid oxygen venting being delayed until after Starship engine cutoff, introduction of new thrust vector control TVC system, upgrades to the orbital tank farm to help increase the propellant flow rate, reinforcement of launch tower base against erosion. In mid-February, SpaceX performed a wet dress rehearsal WDR, which is a launch simulation that involves carrying out all fueling and countdown procedures without actually taking off. However, a series of issues disrupted proceedings, leading to a series of delays and an eventual abort. It turns out the Starship's quick disconnect QD system was faulty, leading to frosting when the propellant was loaded. A few weeks later, on March 3rd, Ship 28 and Super Heavy Booster 10 were stacked on top of each other again for another WDR. This time, everything went by much more smoothly and a launch date was set. SpaceX has successfully launched and landed its Starship prototype. Here is the Starship launching from Boca Chica, Texas yesterday. On March 14th, the Starship prototype was launched for the third time. This time, the mission went on for far longer than Flight 2's 8 minutes and change, lasting 49 minutes and 35 seconds overall. Unfortunately, the booster suffered a premature boost back shutdown after detaching from the ship and was destroyed at an altitude of 462 meters instead of splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico as planned. Ship 28 fared better, but not by much. The ship managed to reach orbital velocity as planned before carrying out a number of post-engine cutoff tests during its coast phase. Problems began upon re-entry as ground control lost contact with Ship 28 at an altitude of 65 kilometers. SpaceX would later reveal that the ship suffered excessive roll rates because the valves responsible for roll control were clogged. As a result, the ship could not carry out the planned India Ocean splashdown. Starship test flight 4 before flight 3's dust had even settled, Musk and Cobras already had Ship 29 and Super Heavy Booster 11 waiting in the wings. The two major parts of Flight Test 4 had been wheeled around Starbase for testing weeks ahead of even Test Flight 3's launch, highlighting the company's never-ending commitment to faster and faster launch cadences. This unprecedented speed is part of SpaceX's attempt to launch nine Starship test flights in 2024 alone. The aim for Flight 4 was successful re-entry for both stages, including a virtual tower landing for the booster and peak heating survival for the ship. The success of this mission would also significantly influence the mission aims of Flight 5. Again, following Flight 3, there were investigations and reports required from SpaceX before the FAA would grant another launch license for Flight 4. The FAA restrictions meant more changes were required. The first change was the modification of Booster 11's oxygen tanks to facilitate better propellant filtration. This was combined with a few hardware and software changes to improve the startup reliability of the Raptor engines for the boost backburn during re-entry. 
The boost backburn helps slow the detached booster stage's descent for a vertical landing. The booster's new additions were also reinforced to improve durability. The ship was fitted with additional roll control thrusters to minimize the excessive rolling that occurred in Flight 3. The protective ceramic tiling was installed with a new layout and engineers were spotted replacing some heat shield tiles ahead of the WDR. On the ground, the SpaceX team made use of the large horizontal propellant tanks at Starbase. These tanks allow for a more efficient propellant flow rate than the old tanks used for previous test flights. As a result, both liquid oxygen and liquid methane fuels could be added much closer to launch time, which in turn minimizes the risk of the venting problems seen during Flight 2. The two late May WDRs revealed changes to the pre-launch procedure. Both fuel types were loaded a few minutes later, ensuring that more of the propellant remained in a cooled liquid state. For the ship, methane, CH4, was filled two minutes later than in Flight 3, while the liquid oxygen, LOX, was filled six minutes later. In the booster, CH4 was a minute later and LOX was five minutes later. Dealing with propellant is an intricate job, which requires tremendous cooling, because the propellant slowly heats back up to gas when exposed to outside ambient temperature. It's better to fill the rocket up as close to launch time as possible. Doing this provides more fuel for launch and post-launch maneuvers and less gas fuel vented, which means more money saved. What didn't change was the pre-flight engine cooling. Here, the engineers run low volumes of liquid oxygen through the engines to prevent the formation of gas bubbles. Though seemingly innocuous, gas bubbles can seriously compromise the integrity of engine parts during the more stressful parts of launch and the descent. The second dress rehearsal went by smoothly and the flight termination system was installed. The FAA issued SpaceX's launch license on June 4th and Starship Flight 4 was fully stacked the next day. Test Flight 4 Results On the morning of June 6th, the booster did its thing and took off from Starbase without a hitch. As any moment now, SpaceX planning a fourth test flight of its mega rocket from Texas. The rocket ate up the heavens as it quickly approached Mach 1 just after a minute. One of the 33 Raptor engines failed at launch, but there was no apparent effect on the overall ascent. The rocket also passed through Max-Q without problems. Max-Q is the point of maximum mechanical stress during takeoff, as the rocket gathers momentum against gravity. At about three minutes into Flight 4, the two stages began separating with the Raptor engines now cut off. Onlookers observed the Starlink live streams and on-screen instruments with bated breath as 13 of Super Heavy Booster 11's engines roared back to life. The boost back burn was happening and happening just as planned. The new propellant valve system had worked. What followed was a landmark moment for SpaceX as the booster successfully flipped back into a vertical position and managed Starship's first successful splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. The ship continued on an orbital velocity coast for a while before the re-entry began. The atmosphere's heat would prove a tough challenge though, as the ship's body suffered notable damage. However, the ship's heat shields proved their worth and preserved the craft for a successful splashdown in the Indian Ocean, aided by the new roll control thrusters. After nearly two hours, Flight 4 was over. A major success and a major leap forward for the gateway to Mars. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you again for watching and we hope you would like the content and subscribe to the channel. With SpaceX's launch cadence, there's no doubt we'll be back soon with news about Starship Test Flight 5. Until then, take care.